boys and girls okay so today's work um is pretty self-explanatory and you guys have been getting great practice so far let's just go ahead and uh, identify a couple terms because the questions are a little trickier and they're not usual questions that you've been getting okay so today's objective is that you can use formulas to find the volume of a right rectangular prism so the word formula is actually going to be used a lot throughout this um lesson today so a formula is something that doesn't have numbers, but represents an equation. Okay, so remember, an equation is a number sentence that has an equal sign and an answer. So, for example, the, the formula for area, okay, as we all know, is length times width. So this here, you can see that a formula can be used in any type of situation when I want to find the area of something. If I put actual numbers here, then I can't use it for any situation. I can only use it for that specific type of um, base or, or shape, um, whether it was a rectangle or a square. I can only use it, like if I put 5 times 2, I can only use it when my dimensions are 5 and 2. I can't use it if my dimensions are 6 and 13, for example. But when it's like this, I can take any length and any width and put them here and get an area. Okay? So now we're going to go to Genie Buys the Fish Tank shown on page 113, number one. Uh, you know that the volume of rectangular prism can be expressed as the product. Product we know is a multiplication, the answer to a multiplication problem. So it's saying that you know the volume of a rectangular prism can be expressed as a product. So it's saying that the volume is the answer of a multiplication problem. Which is true, just like how area is the answer of a multiplication problem. Um, and volume is the answer to a multiplication problem based on its length, width, and height. It wants you to write a formula, write formula to model the volume of a rectangular prism. Okay, so write the formula that we would need to find volume. What is the formula that we need to find volume? We've been working on it this whole module. Okay, now it says it wants you to take that formula that you made for A and write an equation. Okay, so for example here, if I wanted to write an equation for area of this base, I would say area, well actually no I wouldn't, sorry. Oh, where's my tools? There they are. Okay. Sorry about that. I would have to, I'm not, I don't want to give away too much because I've been a little too detailed. I want you guys to be able to go from this. I want you to go ahead and say, write, use the formula, so whatever formula you came up with for A, to write an equation for the volume of the tank. What would you need to do to write for your equation, E equation, that's a keyword here, to find the volume of your tank, okay? Then it says, it doesn't want to give you, don't give the answer right away, you're still going to have V, that's all I'm going to tell you so far, you're still going to have V here, okay? It didn't ask for you to solve yet, it just wants you to write down what are you going to do to get your answer, okay? Based off this prism, that's all I'm going to tell you, what are you going to do based off of this rectangular prism to get volume? And you're going to use the formula that you made in A. And C, it says multiply from left to right. What is the product of the length and width? Okay, so now it's giving you an idea of what you should have had for over here. It's saying starting from the left, okay, starting from the left, you're multiplying a couple things here. What are you going to get when you multiply the length times the width? Okay, what are you going to do when you get length times width? What are you going to do? And then whatever you have left after, you're still going to multiply, okay? So whatever you get as your length and width, you're going to write here. And you're going to multiply with that last part of the formula or your equation at this point. Part D says multiply the product of the length and width. So the product of the length and width, which is this number that you got here, by the height. So you should, that tells you that you should have a height here. Now, what is the volume of the fish tank? So it should say V equals whatever answer you get. And then you're going to look at your units, inches, 
and then cubed. The reason we put cubed is because look at the shape. It is not a flat shape. It's not 2D. It's 3D. Three dimensions. So that when we give our answer, it has a three on the top. Because so, so we multiplied three things by each other. A three-dimensional shape. That's why volume is a space inside of something. Okay? I can't have the space inside of something be something flat. There's nothing to put inside of it. Inside of a 3D shape, I can. So volume is a something that takes up space. 3D. Okay? Number two is very similar. Um, the only thing for number two, and we'll go through it a little quickly, and then we'll talk more about it at 11.30 a.m. today for our video conference. So Janie finds another fish tank in the shape of a right rectangular prism with the dimensions shown. Okay, so here's another one. It says, let B represent the base area of this right rectangular prism. Okay, so it's saying that B, so whenever you write a formula now, it's going to ask you to have B represent the answer. Okay, so it says, what E equation represents the base area of the fish tank. So think about what we just did on the page before. It wants you now to have B represent the base area of this fish tank that Jeannie just found. What do you think would be your equation? And notice the word that they use, equation. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, my computer froze. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, what do you think your equation would be here? And again, I want you to remember, they want you to use B as the answer. Okay, it's going to represent the uh, base area. Sorry, let me make it look like a B. Okay. Equals. And use an equation. Okay. So what would give you the base area here? What here would give you the area of the base? And you're writing as an equation, just like how we did here. What did you end up writing for B as your equation? Okay. For part B, it says write a formula, no numbers, write a formula to find the volume of the right rectangular prism, but it wants you to use B, whatever you got from here. So, for example, we know that volume equals, and you know the regular formula. Okay. I'm not going to say it, but we know what we're talking about now. We know the, form, the formula for volume. It wants you to write the formula, but instead of using the three parts, it wants you to use B. Okay, so I know B has to be somewhere here. What am I going to take? And now multiply with B to give me the full formula for volume. Now what it wants me to do is it wants me to write the equation um, based on the formula I created in part B to find the volume of the tank. <clears throat> Sorry. So I'm going to have my volume equals, and now I'm doing a whole equation. So I'm going to put numbers here now. Okay, so what numbers was it? Um, that I use. So whatever you had for B being multiplied by what you think would give me the full volume of this fish tank. Okay, and then it asks what is the volume of the fish tank. So what you're going to do is on the side you're going to make a semicolon and finally give me your answer and don't forget your units. Okay, label this properly. Okay, I will check in to see how you guys did with that one during our video conference today at 11.30 a.m. Okay, here you should be able to solve all of these. I'm not really going to go over these. It gives you three dimensions. It just wants you to give the answer. Okay, you're not writing an equation. You're not writing a formula. You're literally telling me what is the volume of this figure. Do not forget to label. Notice that the labels are different. Okay, here, here, here. They're, they're different from one another. Okay, number one is just giving you all the information. And it wants you to, again, just give them the answer. And it wants you to label. Okay, if you have any questions, boys and girls, please comment below on this post. And then, as always, I will see you at our video conference today. Today is Wednesday, so it will be at 11.30 a.m.
Okay, talk to you later.